All right. So this is the first stream talks for uh, for YouTube. Today's topic was greatest five, six, seven solvers of all time. So the criteria here, or what we're pretty much doing, is greatest five, six, seven. So not the fastest, because that's just whoever the world record right now, but the people with the most impressive list of accomplishments over literally the entire history of the WCA. So the things we're talking about here are world record, world podiums, world record count, world record impressiveness, which I'll describe a little more world rankings, and kind of intangibles, which I'll also describe a little more. Um, I'm not counting things like continental records, national titles, continental titles, because those don't really matter if you're talking about best in the entire world. Um, for instance, like if you had the European record, and but you were 10th place in the world, like that's way less impressive than being second, because you were worse than 10 people is like if we were talking about best cubers in america national titles would make a big difference but today we're talking about just big best big cubers overall so that's kind of the criteria um i'm just gonna run through the list real quick and then we're gonna go over each person um so rank one felix rank two me uh there's a little there's a bit of a gap there after that i think it's pretty i think the level of accomplishment on the top two is a bit of a tier above and then we got Michal Halkshuk in third, Dan Cohen in fourth, and Ben Saberat in fifth. Um, honorable mentions, Lin Chen, Eric Ockersdijk, Frank Morris, Yuna Kajima. And uh, I threw Max Park on the list here because if we make this in, if we make this list in three years or two years or a year, Max Park is going to be up here. But honestly, you can see in the stats I have on screen that it's just, his, like he's just been around, his, his time of being good at big cubes is way too short to even compete with anyone else. Um, but yeah, so we'll go through these guys in order. Felix, number one, I don't think is too much of a debate. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, world record, world podiums, he has 11. Um, I said, so world record podiums, I ranked him in terms of impressiveness because it's hard. Count of podiums isn't, like, winning first is a lot different than getting third. Um, if you look at me and Felix's podiums, he has 11. I have 9. Uh, I won 5, 6, 7 in 2013, but Felix is... Felix has more pod like more consistent across. He is he did better in 2011, 2017. Why did better in 2013 and 2015? Um, also, yeah, this is just strictly five, six, seven. I do not care anything about three by three, four by four, any of the other events. So I said we're about the same there. World record count is self-explanatory. Felix has 66 world records in big cubes. This is just five, six, seven. Um, clearly, far and away the best. World record impressiveness, same. He took five by five. Five, he's literally the 5x5 five five king. No one can touch Felix in 5x5. Five five. Um, far and away number one. World rankings also. He's held one, like, essentially top one, two, maybe third at times spots in 5, 6, 7 for six years. Like, no one else has done that. Um, that's, like, definitely the best. Um, intangibles would be... things are Like, intangibles are... Like, world record impressiveness is, like... If you got this world record single by .01 ten times... That's a lot less impressive than beating it by a second 10 times or by beating it once by 10 seconds. So that's like, because world record count can be misleading if you beat it by a hundredth a bunch of times. Um, so world record impressiveness is kind of actually looking at the records as a whole. How long did they stand? How much did you drop them by? Were you actually like that dominant? Um, intangibles is similar, but not just limited to world records. Felix was the 5x5 five five king for six. He still is. It's he about to lose it, honestly, the max and nom probably... But um, he had, had the 5-5 five five records for average for like seven, six, seven years now. It's absolutely insane. Um, he's always been a contender for the... 7-7 seven seven is a little more flip-floppy on who is number one at times. There's not as much of a clear-cut number one. He's always been in contention for that spot, though. And um, he, in 6-6, six six, he's always been pretty much either... During the time when... During my period when I was clear-cut number one, Felix was still in contention for two. And in the last couple of years, he's been... Um, pretty much flip-flop on one or two. Um, second, also don't think this is too much of a debate. You could argue there might be a bigger gap between me and Felix as I'm saying, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty clear that I'm second. World's Podiums already went over. Number one, tied with Felix. World record count is 18. My count's a little low. As you can see, it's lower than Halkshuk's count, but it's also due to the fact that during the period of time where I had the 6x6 world record single, I said it four times, even though I had it for five years. Uh, the world records were 154, 149, 140, 133. So you can tell, like, the record was getting chunked by, like, six plus seconds, which is why, like, I had a low count. At one point in 2014, I think I had the top four singles, meaning if I did those in a different order, I would have had four records instead of 
instead of one. So, um, but yeah, world record impressiveness, uh, clearly number two, I think. Six by six world record for five years straight in the single, four years straight on the average. No five by five records, um, which is a little bit of a hit, but the six by six more than makes up with it, along with some solid seven by seven record results. Didn't have them for as long, but uh, the six by six records, I think, clearly make up for it, along with three seven by seven average records, which is solid. Um, world rankings one, two, and five by five, and six by six for five years. I don't think I didn't drop from one, two, and six by six. Since 2011, this is the first time I haven't been ranked in top two in 6x6 since 2010, 2011. 5x5, uh, there was really no one else besides me and Felix for five years or so. And then 7x7, seven seven, I've always been up there, but 7x7, seven seven, I've dropped, I was looking at the rankings, I've dropped a lot more down to, it's usually top three, but it's been dropped more. So that's not quite as impressive. Not Felix is much more consistent than 7. Um, and Tangles would be 6x6 six six dominance. There was literally, I mean, from 2012 to 2016, I had both single and average records. The only thing that Felix took the average record one week before Worlds 2015, and then I came back at Worlds and beat it in the first round and the finals to win. So I don't like that's like the only time I lost that I came back in like the most dominant way path possible. Also, Big Cube sweep at 2013 Worlds. Uh, winning all Big Cubes at the same World Championships is pretty like no one's ever done that, and that's like pretty straight up like best Big Cuber at that one competition. So, um, I don't think these two are too debatable. I think most people will agree here. Uh, then there's a small gap because a lot of the the rest of the guys in these lists, well, Halchuk, Cohen, and Barat, all have very, they all have at their peak. They're probably pretty similar, or maybe a little less than me and Felix. But the, our run has just been so much longer that maintaining that just makes the run has been like years longer of maintaining the same level of impressiveness, which makes it a big difference here. Halchuk, I think, is a clear cut number three here. Um, the only Lacking thing here is his podiums aren't as impressive. Um, actually, let me just pull up Hulk Shucks one sec. Sorry. I oh, should have had this ready for the video. Um, anyways, the podiums aren't quite as impressive here. Uh, if we look, 3 2 1 at 20, 2009, Dan had a more impressive Worlds podium that year, so he was still not the best big Cuber at this competition. And then one other podium, so not that great, but 20 world records, which Ties into in seven by seven, he had single and average for one and a half years. That is very impressive. It, this is not when I first saw it. It looked like he was farming records because he was he was beating it by a decent amount, but it looked in a small period. But no one else had them. He dropped the records by a ton of time. Seven by like true seven by seven dominance for a long time, and then also hauchuk has been around forever. He was like the big cube. One of the him and Dan were like the elite big cubers in 09, uh, 2010. But unlike Dan, when he kind of fell off of being the top one, top two, he's still top five for the next years to come. And he's still kind of a, he's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily maybe call him in the same class as the other top tier keywords in the world, but he's still around, still getting top 10 results. That carries a big weight here because um, more impressive out of these three guys, more, most impressive world record count, most impressive world recordness, most impressive in world rankings, same with intangibles. Um, just the world podium's a little off. That's not nearly enough to throw him under Dan or Bense. Fourth place, I have Dan. Honestly, Dan and Bense could go either way, in my opinion. Um, pretty tough decision here. Dan essentially had I valued him higher because Dan has a more impressive temporary like Dan's peak was a lot higher than Bense's, while Bense was more of a consistent player. Dan in 2009, he won world championships in five six and got third and seven. Like that's only as close to as good as it gets he is, was the best big cuber at world champs 09 there was no doubt he also came back in 2011 got second and five and six solid um that's that holds a lot of weight same with an 09 i think about 09 he used records in five by five six by six and seven by seven all in that same year that 09 dan was the big cube king like records in all of them like exploded at worlds They're, like that is that, in my opinion, is like really solid. Um, I'd say he's a fourth world record impressiveness because Ben says world records are pretty low. Dan has a bigger count. He had him for longer. Uh, world rankings, he was like first and second for like two years. The problem with Dan is that he really falls off. And the bigger reason he's under Halkshuk is that Halkshuk and Dan were kind of the guys in 2009, 2010. Dan was better than him, but Halkshuk, Dan was better by a slight margin. But Halkshuk really kept up that top tier uh, mentality and performance for the next years to come. While well, Dan really dropped off after 2011, 2012 he was okay. 2013, I, yeah, 2013 he went to Worlds but didn't podium anything. So 
I'd say that's kind of why I place him fourth. Ben say you can make the argument over Dan. Um, he has been around for much longer, but his peak was way not nearly as impressive. Um, championship podiums, second, third, and first, second. Like he's only really been good at seven by seven. He has he won once, but only one title. And then the real key here is they got podium in seven by seven, three world champs in a row, which is really impressive. That speaks to longevity. Low world record count. Didn't have the world records for very long either in terms of impressiveness. The real reason he's up here is um, he was top, and he was like he was in seven by seven. He was top three for like five years, like for like five or six years. And in five and six, he's been top ten for years and years. Even when he might not have been ever clear cut the best big cuber in the world, but his longevity certainly shows that he was probably second best big cuber in the world for multiple years. And even now, he's kind of in his longevity now doesn't make as big of a deal isn't as big of a deal to me personally, which is why I have him below Dan, but that's, he just has that factor of, he was, even in 2012, 2013, 2014, he's still, like, really up there and getting the results. Like, you can see, 2013, he got second in 7x7. Seven seven. I guess he was still, obviously, like, up there. He got a world record in 2013. Um, he's still, like, playing with everyone else, but not quite as impressive. Um, but yeah. These three, I think there's also a clear, these five, these Top two being the top two is very clear. These three being the next three are also very clear. And there's a decent gap. We got our honorable mentions. Lin Chen, um, no world podiums, kind of a result of him not traveling that much. Um, world record count all in 7x7. Seven seven. Really dominant in 7x7. Seven seven. Had world records for like a year and a half, but really didn't, doesn't have anything else to show for it. He is good world ranking 6 and 7, but if this was a 7x7 seven seven list, only 7x7, seven seven, he'd certainly be in the top five, but... I don't think dominance in 7x7 seven seven for a year and a half is nearly enough to throw him up here. Um, Akersdijk, I had him an honorable mention. He was top 5 in 5x5 five five for a long time, but um, him being super cool and being the man is not enough to really kind of put him up there with the other players. Six and you can't. His 5x5 five five wasn't nearly good enough to carry him up onto this list because his 6 and 7 were really kind of um, non-existent. Frank Morris is a big name thrown around a lot in the past. Uh... But I was looking at his actual stats, and he got one podium. He won Worlds in 5x5. He had five world records in 5x5, but he didn't really have... This is uh, how long he had the combined total of world records, and it really wasn't that impressive. Six and seven were pretty non-existent, and um, it's really he just kind of the original. Like, when the big cubes came out, he was the guy, but that was really about it. Um, Yu Nakajima. I thought Nakajima had more impressive results. Uh, I guess he was kind of known more for being a 3x3 guy in 4x4 in the beginning. Uh, one world podium, 5x5, five five, I think, which isn't that impressive. This is just 5 six, seven again. He did win worlds in 3x3, three three, obviously. Two world records in 5x5. Five five. He has the he has the added bonus of being... His longevity is very impressive, but the rest of his results don't really kind of hang with everyone else. Um, for all everyone with mad recency bias, Max Park is... I mean, Max Park is clearly, like, the worst on this list in terms of current accomplishments. Like, as of right now, you can look at podiums. He got third in 5x5 five five and 6x6, six six, which is essentially, like, tons of people do that. Random people get... Like, if he never competed at Worlds again, there'd be no... Like, no one would even be like, oh, who is Max? Well, okay. No one would say that right now, obviously. But, like, if someone came to Worlds at second and fifth and 5 and 6, people would, like, just, just, just some guy. World record count, also 3... World record duration, the total time he's had world records in big cubes is like eight weeks. Which is funny to think about because like everyone's like, he's so good at big cubes. He literally got him like eight weeks ago versus like years. Um, uh, he's also 5x5, five five, has been good for about a year, 6x6, six six, three months. I have n The real intangible is that Max is going to be on this list 100%. I have 100% confidence that Max is going to be on this list in a year or two. Like... I wouldn't be surprised if Max got all the big cube records and held him for a couple years, maybe more. But, like, I made this list as your accomplishments. I'm not giving you any credit for anything that hasn't happened yet. So if Max lost all his world records tomorrow, um, yeah, he would have been good for, like, a week or, like, a month, but that would have been about it. So Max is the person to watch out for, for sure. He's the only person on this list, really, that doesn't um, all... I mean, Felix and I are still active, and the other guys... Um, Bense and Halkstuck are still active, but I don't think anyone's arguing when I'd say that pretty much the most impressive parts of all our careers are over. 
um, so everyone on this list except for Max, and that's why it's easy to make this list looking back on everyone's careers, while Max's career is very young and still in the making. So, if you don't agree with me, that's cool. Uh, leave some uh, votes in the comment section on YouTube. I'm going to post this on YouTube. Um, comment, let me know what you think. Think if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm totally crazy for putting people where they are. Uh, yeah, I just kind of, this is my opinion, obviously. Um, just looking back on everything. And uh, so, yeah. Again, this is like the greatest of all time, not fastest. Because then, obviously, Max is the fastest, like, 6x6 six six solver because he is the fastest time right now. But, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah.